this presentation is about the rise of what we call the No Party in England. And it's part of an interdisciplinary research project that I'm working on with uh, Chris Rao, who's a colleague here at Cambridge, where we're trying to combine insights from political science, political economics, and labor economics. Over the past three or four decades, many Western democracies have experienced a process of political disengagement. And one of the major manifestations of that is disengagement with political parties. Many individuals, both in old and new democracies, have stopped identifying with political parties. Let me illustrate this with some data from England. <clears throat> the large scale longitudinal survey called Understanding Society has since the 1990s been asking a large representative sample of individuals in England and beyond about whether they identify with a political party or not, if they feel close to a political party or not. I want you to focus on the black line in this diagram. In 1990, about a quarter, 25% of the respondents when asked if they identified with a political party would answer no, that they do not. In 2010, that has increased to about half the respondents, 50%. So over this period, we have seen a doubling from about a quarter of the English population not identifying with any political party to about half. This is what we refer to as the rise of the no party. Half the electorate today does not identify anymore with one of the main political parties. Now, why would we care about this? I think we care about this for two reasons. One is that political disengagement leads to exclusion and political inequality. And one very good reason for that is that political parties simply pay very little attention to groups of voters which have disengaged themselves with the political process. The second reason is that political disengagement undermines the role of political parties in maintaining democracy. And political parties play an important role in keeping the informal norms and <coughs> conventions that keep democracy working together. They're part of the safety rails of democracy, you may say. So for these reasons, we would expect this disengagement process to lead to polarization, conflict of what political scientists like to call democratic backsliding. So we want to know what is behind this rise of the no party. And there are three potential drivers that we might consider if we want to explain that increase in the fraction of the population that no longer identifies with any political party. So one possibility is that it has to do with demographics. We know that political behavior of individual changes with the age and over the life cycle. As the saying goes, if you're not a socialist when you are young, you have no heart. And if you're not a conservative when you're old, you have no brain. Another possibility is that it has to do with political generations. Maybe the post-war generation behaves in a different way from the baby boomers or generation X simply because the members of a generation has a shared set of experiences in the formative years that impact on their political behavior. A third possibility is that it has to do with the secular trend, the type of changes that are just happens in the political behavior of everybody at a given point in time, because they are exposed to the same types of experiences. So we would like to know which of these it is, or perhaps a better way of putting it, what is the combination of these things that might be behind this rise of the, of the no party? It turns out that it's harder to think about this than one might have thought initially. And the reason is that period, age, and cohort effects, the three things that we are trying to decompose, are linearly dependent. So if the year is 2000, and we have an individual that is born in 1950, it doesn't take a PhD in mathematics to work out that that person must be 50 years of age. Or conversely, if I know somebody is age 50 and we are in year 2000, then I can easily work out that that person must be born in 1950. 
So in order to do this sort of decomposition, we need to find a solution to the so-called period eight cohort problem. And the way we do that is to exploit the fact that the Understanding Society survey tracks individuals over time. So we observe the same individuals when they're young and when they are old. And that allows us in a straightforward way to calculate the age effect, the influence of age on political identification with political parties. I observe um, Rita and Peter when they are young and I also observe them when they are old. So it is a straightforward matter to work out what the effect of aging is on their partisanship. In a similar way, I observe <coughs> all the individuals in the survey, Amrita, Peter, Liz, and Bo, at a given point in time. So if 1990, say the fall of the Berlin Wall, had an impact on the political uh, behavior of all the individuals experiencing that, we can estimate that in a straightforward way as well. So that just leaves us with the cohort effect, and that's the innovation in what we're doing in our research. We're trying a new way of estimating this, and it works like this. So we are observing the political or the partisan uh, choices of individuals over time. That allows us to decompose the party identification of a given individual into a permanent component that stays with that individual for life and a life cycle component, something that changes with age over the life cycle. The permanent component of an individual's <laughs> identification with a political party contains within it the cohort effect. So by averaging across individuals in the same cohort, Amrita and Peter in my diagram here, or Liz and Bo in the 1990 generation in the diagram, we can back out the cohort effect. So in this way, we can do the decomposition and try to separate the three effects out to see which one might be able to explain that rise of the no party. So this diagram here shows the cohort effect. On the x-axis, we have the cohorts, starting with the cohort born in 1930, going up to the more recent ones. On the y-axis, we have an index of the support for the no party. So the higher that is, the more support there is for the no party. We have normalized that to be zero for the first generation. So everything here is measured relative to that. And what we see immediately from that graph is that there is not an awful lot of difference between the, the different generations, possibly a bit of an upwards trend, which has been reversed more recently. It does not look like that cohort effects can explain the rise of the no party. This is the age effects. So on the x-axis, we have age starting with age 20 going to age uh, 80. And we have normalized the uh, support for the no party at zero for people age 20. So relative to that, we can see as individual age, their support for the no party goes down they start identifying to a greater extent with one of the main political parties. We combine that with the fact that the, over this period, society has been aging, this clearly cuts the wrong way. It cannot explain the rise of the no party. On the contrary, it has slowed down the rise. The last possibility is the period effect of the secular trend. So what we have on the x-axis now is years, starting in 1990, going up to, to the most recent uh, survey round in 2020, again, normalizing the support for the no party to zero at the beginning. And we can see relative to that period after period, there has been a secular increase in the fraction of the population that has switched away from the main parties and no longer identify with any of, any of them there's the support for the no party has been going up. So <clears throat> behind the rise in the no party, there appears to be a secular trend, which has been slowed down by these age effects, and it's not related to cohort effect. It's about secular disengagement. Now, behind this process, there is this movement of individuals who previously identified with political parties who then stopped doing that 
and start identifying with no party. A natural question to ask is whether or not that process is more like a stepping stone to some new identity, or it's more like a permanent destination that individuals end up in. In order to get some insights into that, we calculate two rates. The party exit rate, which is just capturing the movement from the main parties to the no party, and the party finding rate, which is the movement from the no party to the main parties. These two graphs here shows these rates. On the left, we have the party exit rate, and on the right, we have the party finding rate. And we are showing this uh, for individuals at different ages. If we compare the gray line, which are individuals who were surveyed in the 1990s, to the dotted black line, which represents individuals who were surveyed in the 2010s, we can see a clear shift. The party exit rate has gone up and the party finding rate has gone down. And that is true across all age groups. So this suggests that the move of individuals into supporting, in quotation mark, the no party is much more of a permanent state than a stepping stone to some new political identity this process is one of persistence. So we can summarize this by saying that this remarkable increase in the fraction of the population that no longer identifies with any political party is part of a secular process of disengagement. It's the secular trend that is behind it. It's slowed down by the age effects, but it's not related to any cohort effects. It's a process which is persistent. Once you enter into supporting, in quotation marks, again, the no party, you can tend to stay there rather than using it as a stepping stone to finding a new political identity. Now, knowing that behind the rise of the no party, we have this secular trend is a first step, but it is not the end station because it doesn't tell us what is causing that secular trend. And it's not telling us who are these no party supporters. And the focus that we have had in this on England, of course, raises questions about whether similar processes and for similar reasons are operating in other societies. So clearly, a lot more research is needed. Thanks.